Now let's talk a little bit about the uh, the Bengals. Um, Cincinnati's, you know, they've had some a, a past over the last ten years, you know, where they were kind of at the bottom of the uh, AFC North, but recently they've, you know, uh, transcended up. And last year they won the division. In two thousand and nine, they kind of had some ups and downs. Like we said, they won the division, but they lost uh, in tragedy. Chris Henry passed away. And how you're obviously close with uh, Marvin Lewis. How has he uh, tried to help? keep that team together through some of the hardships and, you know, change the uh, ethic and change the, uh, the whole mentality of the Cincinnati Bengals? Well, I think Marvin did that back in 03 when he came in. He really, it went from a 2-14 and 14 team to, you know, we had two years of 8-8. Eight and eight. Uh, In 05, we went 11-5, and five, uh, won a division. Uh, in 2006, we started to have um, a lot of trouble off the field in that sense, but um, he sort of, he righted the ship and he got it back to normal. Uh, but he's done a good job. In, in my opinion, he's done a real good job. And, uh, you know, he didn't get the credit a lot because the team didn't win the last few years. But once they got it back together in 09, he sort of got things going the way he wanted them to go. Uh, so I definitely think he's one of the top coaches because of that. Because he, you know, he, he had success. They went down a little bit and then he brought them back up. So uh, he's definitely one of my favorite coaches. Marvin Lewis uh, definitely has changed the you know the, the attitude out in Cincinnati and and it's a tough division AFC North I mean obviously the Ravens are playing good uh, the Steelers we know what they can do and uh, you know it's interesting what do you think you know next year brings for the Bengals I mean obviously you have uh, your your finger on the pulse of the team and, and what do you think uh, 2010 brings you know what I mean if I had to honestly rank the teams in the division right now I would say it will be Cincinnati uh, will be my favorite, followed by Baltimore, a very close Baltimore, uh, because I think the addition of Anquan Bolton to Baltimore is going to be huge. Um, I still worry a little bit about their secondary, about the health of their secondary. But um, I would say Baltimore, Baltimore will be second right now in Pittsburgh. Uh, third, even though I thought the Steelers were probably the best team in the division last year, they just lost in close games. Uh, and then Cleveland coming up the end uh, being four. So, um, it might finish the same way it did last year, in my opinion, because I think the Bengals got better in the passing game, and that, that, that was their weakness. You know, defensively, they look about the same. They can get some guys back, keep them healthy. Uh, they lost some guys down the stretch. So I would say Cincinnati improved from last year's uh, division champion team. Uh, team um, and, and everything, I think, will say the same. But the, the thing about the Bengals, they have a tougher schedule. So uh, you, you don't know how that's going to shake out. They play Indy and New England. Um, you know, they play Miami. They play a lot of tough teams outside the division, San Diego again. Uh, so it's going to be a tough road. But if they are one of the better teams, they're supposed to at least split with those good teams. Yeah, absolutely. Now, as a guy who's been around Chad Ochocinco, he brings a lot of flair and personality to the team. How do uh, – does everybody on the, the Bengals organization in the locker room know he's just a fun-loving guy? Or are there some people who, who look at it like, you know, he's – He's a distraction. He's always doing, you know, goofy things. And or is he just, you know, does everybody know he's just a good-hearted person who likes to have fun? Well, he has the respect of the team. I mean, you you never hear things come out of here really about Chad. Um, you know, we we had a tough little stretch there. We lost some games, um, and so some things got heated. You know, Chad didn't want to be here, um, but then he sort of turned it around. Uh, but throughout all of that whole time, everybody loved Chad. No matter what he said, the coaches always took him back. The owners took him back. The players took him back, you know, once they got back into the season. So uh, he doesn't have a problem around here in Cincy. Everybody knows um, that he's going to do his thing when the off season's here. But he's going to come in in shape. He's one of the hardest workers. Uh, you know, he's one of the hardest workers that I've ever played with. Um, and he gets it done on the field. His production is still up there. So uh, no matter what he does, the Dancing with the Stars, the dating shows, uh, everybody pretty much has an idea that he's going to come back in shape. Um, I think Carson recently spoke out that he wishes he was here, uh, but he didn't say anything bad about Chad. He just he just wished he was here. So uh, that's sort of how it is around here. They want him here, but he's not, so they don't really worry about it. Right. Yeah, you know, personally, I'm a big fan of his. I, I enjoy watching him uh, do his thing, and I, I kind of wish the league would allow some of those celebrations because, in my opinion, they're hilarious. I love I love watching him do those interesting little skits after a touchdown. Yeah, and it's cool. I mean, with a guy like Chad, he keeps things interesting. But then, you know, the, the thing is, if you allow him to do it, you allow other guys to do it that really don't put a lot into it, and then it starts to take away from the game because, I mean, that's that's in Chad's nature. But, 
you know, just like a Joe Horn when he tried to get the cell phone out of the goalpost a few years ago. It took him five minutes and that delayed the game. And uh, so you got a lot of guys that try to do the same thing, but it doesn't work. So I can understand what the league's doing. But but he definitely uh, wants to have fun on the field. And he does. Right. Well, I got one more question for you, and I want your wholehearted, honest answer. The Music City Miracle. Was that a backward pass or was that a true lateral? Hey, that was that, that was that was a legal that was a legal play. That's all I can say. It um, it was probably as close as you can get it. Um, <laughs> you know, we practiced that play. The thing is, we practice it every Saturday, and and nobody thought it would work. Everybody laughed every time we did it, and um, and he actually, I was on that kickoff return team. He took me out, and he put in uh, Frank Wycheck. So that would have been me throwing it to Kevin Dyson if he didn't put Frank in. Uh, but, but it, it was, a, I mean, it was the craziest feeling ever being down with 16 seconds left and thinking the game was over and then seeing that play happening that that whole city changed from that point on. So uh, every time I see that, that, that play, I get goosebumps, man. It, it was a special feeling. I can imagine. Well, John, I want to thank you uh, immensely for coming by and talking to us today. Uh, we wish you the best of luck with your bowling for autism, which is coming up and uh, all the great things you do in the community. You're a, a very high character person, and we enjoyed speaking with you today at SkinnyPost.com. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Would you take care and good luck, and make sure you bowl at least over 200, <laughs> all right? I'll try, man. All right. Take care. Thank you.